Uh, hi guys, thanks for joining. I'm uh, Raja Rao. In this section, I will go over how to use remote objects in our AngularJS Anika. And here is our agenda. First of all, I will go over remote objects themselves. Uh, this is a new feature that was released in Spring 14 as a developer pilot. And then I will show how to use these remote objects in AngularJS. And finally, I'll go over the differences between remote objects and remote actions. Uh, remote objects are just a way to communicate with Salesforce servers from Visual Force without having to create any Apex classes. And here is how it looks. First of all, you will have to create an Apex component called Apex colon remote objects. And inside that, you need to create another component called Apex remote object model. So this component takes a couple of parameters. One of them is the name. So this is the name of your objects. In this case, it is uh, warehouse underscore underscore C. This is a custom object. And it also takes a shorthand. So if you don't want to use underscore underscore C in all your JavaScript, you could give a shorthand called J shorthand and also define all the fields that your JavaScript is going to use when interacting with Salesforce. And you can also create similar JavaScript shorthand for each of the fields that your custom objects might be using. And once you define it, Salesforce is going to create a JavaScript class called sObjectModel that you can use to interact with Salesforce. For example, here we are creating an instance of warehouse object model using new sObjectModel.warehouse, which is the shorthand that we gave up here. And once we get hold of the warehouse instance, we can then make any kind of uh, CRUD operations. Like uh, in this case, we are doing a retrieve operations where we are saying, okay, retrieve 10 items of warehouse objects, and then we'll do something with the result. Okay, in addition, we could also send in more constraints when we are retrieving the items. So for example, we can send in a where class. You can also see this equal to sign. And internally, it actually creates a real SQL query to perform SQL operations. And it's not limited to just that. You, could, you can pretty much send in any kind of constraints when you're retrieving items. So that is retrieve. So let's take a look at the how do you create an item. To do that, all you need to do is create a JSON object that has all the fields and their values. And you could simply create the, an instance of the remote object model. You simply call create to create the object. And then you will get the response in a callback. Similarly, update works the same way as create, but the only thing is you need to ensure you're passing in the ID here, and then you call update on top of your remote object. And one other interesting thing about update is you can actually update multiple items by passing in the, a list of IDs uh, in an array as a first parameter, and then you pass in what fields needs to be updated as a second parameter. So in this case, for example, it goes through each of these objects and updates the first name and last name of both of these items. And finally, uh, deleting an object. Again, deleting works exactly the same, but there are two ways you could do it. The first way is to create del or delete method on a real remote object that was created using .create API. This is because when you use the create API, then the remote object will actually have the ID of the object. Uh, where the other one is by creating a dummy remote object and simply calling the del method on that. But in this case, we need to pass in the ID to this dummy remote object. Okay, that's remote objects. Now let's take a look at how to use remote objects in AngularJS. But before that, I would like to quickly show the enhanced app. It has three tabs, as you know. Uh, so the contacts tab still uses remote TK library and inter which internally uses remote actions, whereas the accounts tab actually use remote objects. So it also has a little bit of a CRUD operation code in it. Let's take a look at the code. So first of all, I have defined the remote objects in my index page, just like you would do in any other frameworks. And then I actually make the CRUD operation calls from the services file. This is a static resource file that we created in the earlier video. As you can see in our account service, we are actually creating a remote object and then we are retrieving the remote object by uh, receiving some query constraints. And this is actually a private function. So this is not exposed to the controllers at all. And instead we'll expose it via a public API called all. And that internally passes a constraint to this private query function. Now, if you look at the controller, so this is the one that wires up everything. So it is actually injecting 
are importing our account service and then it is calling the all API that we have exposed through our service. And once the record comes back, it will simply set it to the scope object, which in turn gets populated in the view. Okay, so that brings us to the last point. So let's take a quick look at the differences between remote objects and remote actions. So in this case, I'm gonna use popular remote TK library, which internally uses remote actions. So if you take a look at the code, here we have a contacts controller that happens to use remote TK, and then we have our accounts controller, which happens to use remote objects. But if you look at the controller code itself, the API contacts.all looks exactly same as accounts.all, although they each use completely different way to communicate to Salesforce. So now this is really a, an interesting point of using AngularJS. AngularJS by providing a mechanism called services, it allows us to encapsulate how we communicate with different services. So it allows us to write a very well structured code. So where they actually differ is first in the index page for remote objects we are going to define the object itself. Whereas in remote TK, uh, we need to use jQuery and also we need to import a remote TK component. Along with that, there is a, an Apex class that we need to add to our Salesforce org that this component talks to. And obviously the other difference is in the services section. So if you look at our contact service, so it actually creates a remote TK client and uses remote TK client's API to perform queries. And you can notice here, the query looks like a real SQL query. Uh, whereas if you're using uh, remote objects, then as I showed earlier, we create an instance of S object model, and then we perform CRUD operation using the remote objects API, like retrieve or create, etc. Okay, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, please ping me on my Twitter at RogerRawTV. Thanks for watching.